Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Super, super exciting day. Look what just came in. It's the Canon EOS M50. I was so excited. I actually got it in yesterday late. Didn't have a chance to unbox it uh, and do a video. But what I did do was I opened the box. The only thing I took out was the battery and the charger because I got the battery charged. These are LPE12 batteries, Canon LPE12, just so you know. They do fit a, a few other Canon uh, cameras. And I believe this is the first M series to take the 12. If memory serves, the rest of the M series, I believe, uses the LP17. So it'll be interesting to see how the battery life is on the M50 with this smaller LPE12. Now, in light of that, the other thing I should mention is I did also get B&H to send me a Watson spare battery. So this is a non-OEM. This is Watson, a brand that B&H carries. I've used these before. I've reviewed these before. I've had very good luck with them. I think they're good quality. The fit and finish on them is nice, and they seem to hold up just as well as the um, OEM Canon LPE batteries. So this is a Watson LPE12 equivalent. So we do have two batteries for doing the review here with the venerable little EOS M50. So without further ado, I'm super excited to get this baby out of the box and to show you guys the camera. I haven't even had it in my hands. I just, as I said, took the, uh, the battery out. So that was the, the packaging for the battery and the charger. We have here a, uh, some warranty information, actually a fairly thick printed user manual, which kind of bucks the trend lately. A lot of people aren't giving printed, a lot of companies I should say, aren't giving printed user manuals. Um, so we've got uh, some paperwork there. And now we're getting into the good stuff. EOS camera strap for the M50. And you can see how it's packaged nicely in the center there, packaged protectively. And uh, let's just slide the box away for a second. We've got some bubble wrap housing the body. Wow, I, I don't even have it out yet, and I'm already struck by how small and lightweight this little camera is, which is part of the reason for going mirrorless. Wow, very small and lightweight. Um, this is significantly smaller, I would say, than the G85, the Panasonic G85 that I'm filming this video with right now. Um, very small camera. Um, fits right in the palm of my hand. Um, but still not too small. I'm already getting the impression um, of a nice tactile feel and whatnot. Um, you know, sometimes a camera can be too small and light and you have a hard time getting your, you almost need child fingers to push buttons and I'm not feeling that. It's, it's about the perfect size to go just small enough but not too small is what my initial thoughts are right off the bat taking it out. What else we got in this box here? Okay, so this is the kit lens. So this is the kit with the 15, um, 15 to 45 IS STM, which is that right there. Let's get that out in just a second. Just want to see what else we have in this box. Oh, what am I saying? This is not the kit with the 15 to 45. It does have the 15 to 45, but it also has the um, 50 to 200 kit, 55 to 200 IS STM. So this is a dual lens kit, and I intentionally got that kit because I wanted to have a long lens to, uh, to do a review on it and show you how this lens is here. So this is the, uh, the 55 to 200 IS STM, and this is an EOS M series lens, so no adapter required. And this is the standard kit lens that you've seen before with other M series cameras. This is the 15 to 45. So that's the 1545 IS STM uh, lens. Yes, IS STM. Yep. So it's an STM lens. It's image stabilized and 1545, which frankly, as I've said before, gives this lens a bit of an advantage because it's a 15 instead of an 18. So you're getting three extra millimeters when you're considering you're already using a crop sensor, so 1.6 crop on Canon APS-C. That's giving you wider than if you're using 18. And not only that, uh, one of the drawbacks as we've discussed with the M50 is the 4K has a pretty heavy crop in 4K video about 2.56 times. So the additional three mils there helps with that as opposed to if we had had a 18 millimeter kit lens. For instance, if the Canon 90D comes out with the same type of 
4K video if it has that heavy 2.5 times uh, crop factor. An 18 mil, you're going to notice the difference between that, uh, especially if you want to use it for vlogging or up close. The 15 is advantage to the M series, to the M50. So, the beautiful little M50. Now, you know, first and foremost, let me put these lenses to the side here. Let's put them over here. Try to balance all the stuff on the table. I've heard other reviewers, I've been watching other reviews just to, uh, you know, with the excitement of the M50 coming out um, and say that the M50 feels cheap, um, cheaper, plasticky. And I have to say that I'm not, I'm not feeling that. The rubber on the grip feels really good. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels nice under the pads of your fingers, has a nice tactile feel. The camera feels well put together um, and... It doesn't, I mean, it feels like the top, I'm not saying it is, but it feels like the top deck on here is metal. And regardless if it is or not, it has a nice fit and finish and a nice feel to it. It doesn't, doesn't feel cheap to me. I was impressed by a couple, I shouldn't say impressed, but it was impressed upon me by a couple of other reviewers when they were opening or, or talking about the camera, the M50, that they thought it felt plasticky and cheaper. And as you know, I've been trying to figure out where the M50 actually fits in comparable levels of DSLR lineups. So that had me thinking that maybe it was a lower, more of an entry level, but I wouldn't say so based on fit and finish. I'm actually quite impressed with the fit and finish of the camera. It has the very nice, very angle touchscreen LCD. Let's pop the battery in here. So we have um, the... Uh, Let's see, you, you slide it out. I thought that was a switch, but it's actually a removable hole cover on the bottom of the battery compartment, which makes me think, I'm going to have to check into that, but that makes me think that we can get an adapter for the M50 because why else would you need that hole in the battery compartment? At least that's what I'm thinking it's for. We'll check that out and get back to you. We'll put the battery in here and... I didn't bring a memory card in here with me, but that's all right, because I just wanted to turn the camera on, show you. Okay, you're, you've got your initial setup screen, so it's wanting me to go into date and time setup and everything there. But you can see the nice, you know, our standard very angle LCD that we're used to seeing on an 80D or something like that. It's a decent, um, it's touch screen. It's something that um, I'm looking forward to using because Canon's always done a good job with that. Um, and it's been a carryover that way as far as like what the, the advantages of it and what we've had on like the ADD. Let's take the um, cover, the, the front uh, lens cap off or the camera body cap, I should say. Let's put the uh, 1545 on here. And that's a nice size little lens. It maintains the, the small and weight feel of the, uh, the M50. And we've got, it looks like we've got a, there we go, a little lock on there for when it, it come, when you close it down, it locks into place, which is probably just for safety and for making sure it doesn't get damaged in transport or when you put it away in the bag, just keeping it as small as possible. But that's the lens fully extended and, um, you know, small, lightweight. Um, and actually the lens has a nice fit and finish to it. Let me just double check here. Take that off again for a second. It looks to me, I'll have to double check that, but it looks like the 1545 is not a plastic mount um, on the lens. But I will double check that. It looked like it was metal. And the fit and finish of the lens itself, it has a very nice zoom ring to it. It's not the smoothest one I've ever felt, but it doesn't feel terrible. It's not as smooth as, say, the, the kit lens on the Fuji, um, the um, X-T20. My, my, you know, my favorite little 18 to 55, 2, 8 to 4 that I always say is the nicest kit lens ever. But for a very inexpensive lens with a great range, it's, it's, it looks decent. It's got a nice, you know, fit and finish on it. It's decent. I'm not saying it's a high-end, you know, Leica lens, but it's, it's a decent little lens. I would go so far as to say that the fit and finish and, and even just the visual aesthetic of it are nicer from an initial impression of than, say, the 18 to 55 that we get as a kit lens with a lot of the Rebels like the SL2. Um, it's a nice little lens. And again, it's STM and it's an IS lens. We've got the um, 55 to 200. Just to show you what the difference is here, let's um, close this lens down. 
and put the front cap back on. We'll pop that on so you can see what the uh, M50 looks like with the long lens on it. There we go. Got our dots lined up. So um, this is, should probably put a cap back on here. This is the uh, 55 to 200 on the M50. And again, still pretty small. The camera and the lens are smaller than, you know, fit within the, the length of my hand. Not even that long extended. So maintaining a compact telephoto lens, that gives you 200. Bear in mind, field of view on 1.6, we're closer to 300. And also with the 2.56 in 4K, you're getting even more reach than that. So if you want to extract stills, from video or if you're shooting video in 4k it's going to give you quite a good reach with this 200 same um, build quality fit and finish as the other kit lens not stellar but very nice it's um it's it's a plastic lens but it doesn't reek of feeling cheap or anything it's just an it's a it's a bargain value lens um is stm so it's image stabilized it's got the stm motor in it um, and a great i think the pair of these is a great option for the M50 or any of the M series cameras as a couple of kit lenses, which is one of the reasons I wanted to um, get it in in this configuration with these two lenses to show you. Um, because I think, now I'm going to have to evaluate this and shoot with it, but I would think in the in the M series, you know, I have my top four recommended lenses, uh, top four best value lenses for Canon, and those are basically the APS-C lenses. We've got the 50 F1.8 STM. That, now, that's not an APS-C lens. That's a full-frame lens. But... The 10 to 18, the 18 to 135, and the 55 to 250. So in the M series range, I think these are replacing that in the sense of um, there's your long telephoto. Here's your standard kit zoom, 15 to 45. And then we'll have to look and see whether I would still recommend using the 50 with an adapter or whether I would recommend one of the native M series lenses. Granted, the M series lineup is not very mature right now. That's one of the weaknesses at the moment of the uh, the M series is the uh, the APS-C M series lenses. Hopefully, we're not going to see them not start to flush that out and concentrate too much on full frame mirrorless, which we know they're working on. Hopefully, we'll see more lenses in this lineup. But anyways, that's the camera. Initial impressions are really good. Actually, I really like, I think it's a sexy little camera. It reminds me more of an M5 than, say, like an M100 or something. It's a, it's a very nice-looking little camera. It's one of my favorite-looking mirrorless cameras. I love the size and the weight of it. I love the feel of it. it. As I said, it doesn't seem cheap to me, as other reviewers have kind of alluded to. It seems to me like it's a very nicely made uh, camera at a very good price. I don't get the impression at all of it feeling cheap or, or um, you know, low-end. Um, so I, I'm pretty impressed with it initial impressions looking forward to shooting with it getting it out there get to getting some uh, some shots getting you know playing with the video i want to see what the 4k is like i want to see how this crop affects me i want to try the canon app see if we still get tap and focus with it i have a i, I want to try the uh, the slow-mo the 120 frames per second uh, there's a lot of things i want to try with this camera in the view so stay tuned i'll be addressing those we'll be putting out smaller um videos addressing each of the questions and then we'll be doing a comprehensive review so if you guys have any questions please leave them in the comments below feel free to let me know i'll see if i can get them answered for you if you have any feedback if you already have an m50 let me know what you guys are thinking always great to have your feedback on a camera i'm looking at reviewing maybe there's something you want to point out for me or have me check and uh thanks for tuning in stay tuned we'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com